Welcome to today's lesson. I'm going to be covering a whole lot of interesting features. We've got quite a lot of new learners and we welcome you here to today's lesson. We're going to be looking at some of the most basic aspects of Scratch. Most of you have already got a Scratch account and that's necessary to get started with Scratch. We can move our Scratch cat about. You can see and I'm moving him. He moves about on the stage area. The white area that surrounds him is called the stage area. Sprites are used to make various types of games. In this particular case, we're using a cat as our example. So our scratch cat will be moving around on the stage area. You can see there's all these different things that you can do. Like if I go there, I could save my file and create a new one. When you start scratch, it's going to look pretty much like this. We have a whole lot of different projects that one can engage with. And you can access all the code in those projects and look at the, and understand the logic behind that. And this gives you a good understanding of learning from the experts. You'll find there's people that are really good at coding. And if you go into the code section, you can derive a great deal of knowledge. In our Purple Mash lessons, we've been doing collision events with a man called Isaac Newton. And he said that, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. I may have that quote slightly wrong, but what he meant is that we learn from other people who are far more competent, who have great expertise. These are the giants that we learn from. So you need to go into the coding of these very good coders and learn from them. The wonderful thing about Scratch is that it provides that. You can learn and see the code. It's not often that one gets an opportunity to learn from experts, so one should take the opportunity to use Scratch as a tool of learning. It provides wonderful tools to understand the logic of computer coding. And there's so much out there to explore. And you can see there it says save now, save as a copy, and you can even save to your computer. You will have to activate your Scratch account to be able to share what you know with other people. And hopefully many of you will become experts and be able to share your projects and your learning with other people. It's a wonderful thing to be able to share your experience with others. You will see there's an orange share button right at the top on the toolbar that shows how you can share your project with other people. And you can see my file is by default called untitled, so it hasn't yet been given any particular name. I'm just going to drag my sprite around you can see I'm moving him around on the stage now the stage area is the area we want to contain him we want to keep him moving in that area so we're going to be working in a predefined zone on the stage and we're not going to let our scratch cat go beyond the boundaries of it we'll let him bounce off the edges but we won't let him move now if you had to get your scratch cat you can click on this button you can see I'm if I'm moving him around we can choose and I'm just scrolling down through the code blocks, you'll see they're all different colors and different shapes because they have different properties or different features. They're used in different ways. Scratch is so wonderful for learning. I wouldn't say it's the application or it's a program that you could make real professional applications and programs, but it's something that one would use to learn and gain experience in how coding works and I think it should be used in all schools so there we've got our sprite and he's going to be moving around randomly now that means the computer will help us to allow him to move around I forgot to mention the X and Y axis that's the X axis if you move in this direction you're moving on the X axis and going up and down would be the Y axis axis. So we've got these two axes, the X and the Y axis, and we're going to see that in the blocks of code. They're going to indicate where we're moving. So you can see our scratch cats already in this position. So if I take that bit of code, you can already see if I go go to that's the position of our scratch cat at this moment. So when we move our scratch cat around that go to X and Y would be where he is at the moment. But you won't see those numbers changing as I moved him there. You saw that. But if you look carefully at the blocks, you'll see there is a change. If you look at the fifth or sixth block, it's showing that. I'm just going to change these numbers. So I'm going to put that one as naught, 
and I'm going to change that 30, the x axis, axis to naught as well. So we're going to go at the point of origin where x, the, the line going across and the line going down meet naught, and naught would be in the middle. And let's have a look. We're putting our scratch cat in this corner, and we're going to take the block of code. That block of code would show what the position of scratch cat is. It's 192 on the x axis and 132y. Now we're going to put him on that side, or we can put him in either of these corners, and then take the block of code from the code block and see what, what that position would be. So let's just move him back there, and we can see what that would be. It would be close to 192 on the x-axis, and y 132. Now I'm going to move on the y-axis, I'm going to move my scratch cat down to there, and I'm going to drag that block in, and you can see that that position where Scratch Cat is now is 192 on the x axis and minus 115 on the y axis. That's the position he's in. So if I move him to this corner over here, you can see I've brought in minus 186 and minus 128. That's the position he is on this corner. Let's move him up here. And we drag in. The go to x minus 190 and 128. So you can see every single position that our sprite holds on the on the stage will be indicated by an x and a y position, and that's called the axis. We have axes would be the x and the y. We use an e a x e s. Axes means more than one. The plural. So in certain instances, you want the computer to choose where the the scratch cat or the object will move. So it'll be bringing in, here we're going to choose the random position. We're going to glide within one second to a random position. And you can see our scratch cat has, every time I click on this block, you find our scratch cat will move to a different position on the on the, the stage. So if I click mouse pointer, you can see he's always going to move towards the mouse pointer. So my mouse pointer was down here. So you can choose where you want your object to move and movement is very important when one develops games we all know that this is the the bit of yellow code that i've brought in there is when the sprite is clicked so that would mean when we click on our cat so an event is when something happens like the clicking of the sprite or clicking on the flag or a certain time has lapsed, those would be called events. And most of us are quite familiar through Purple Mash of what an event is. So here we had a gliding to the mouse pointer after three seconds. I'm just going to get rid of that, drag it off there, and you can see that yellow block when the sprite is clicked. The amazing thing about Scratch is that all of the blocks are in a specific color, and that color would indicate what category they belong to and you can see the yellow color of the events when the sprite is clicked it's yellow and it has this shape there it is and that would indicate that it belongs to the events category it's one of the many events that scratch provides it's in yellow I'd like to just show you how we can rotate our sprite how the direction of the sprite is shown so the direction part is in this corner over here You'll need to just scroll to the side to have access to see that a bit better. So I'll scroll it. And you can see the direction here is 90. And you've got this little pointer. You can move it. And look how the sprite is synchronized to move in different directions. So the sprite is can be orientated to move and face in different directions. And that would also influence, influence the movement of the sprite. Whenever coding, you want to make it accessible. So look at these buttons over here. If you click these buttons, you can make everything a little bit more smaller, or you can enhance it for your own viewing, just to make it easier to work with. So you've got those three buttons. And here we've got the code, the event co uh, blocks all on the left-hand side. So I'm just going to go and scroll over to the left, and you can see these colors displayed beautifully. And here you've got a forever loop. The forever loops always starts at the top there and it goes there's a little arrow at the bottom and it loops continuously the code that's read from the first block to the last block will read and then it'll start at the beginning once again it'll continue like that endlessly reading the code blocks in between a very useful bit of 
coding goes in that and it's a wonderful the loops are fantastic they are pretty much very much uh, part of creative coding let's show some movements so i'm going to show you the glide events which is blue because that's the motion area and we glide if i bring that in it says gliding for one second to a position on the x and the y axis axis so you we've got minus 191 and minus 120 on the y axis so we'll see where that is in a moment we can bring it into our forever loop and i forgot to show you this if you click on that it will allow you to go into play mode where you can play the game and everything's pretty clear so all of you i did show you about the x and the y axes over there and i'd just like to show you how we would use movement a little bit better now we always hear about automation and how computers can do things by themselves so i'm going to bring in a random to choose the X and the Y positions. I want the computer to choose that, and that's called automation. We'd like the computer to choose and change that minus 191. So we're going to look for this bit of code, pick random, and that's going to choose a position for us. We're going to put a block in there that's going to choose a random number between, at the moment, it says 1 and 10. As far as I can remember, I think the top block was 200 and the bottom minus 200 on either the X and the Y axes. So I think we'll be trying to work with a number between minus 200 and plus 200. But we will see what we can do using those blue block blocks that I've shown over there. So we're going to move our scratch cat within the area defined on, on those boundaries. And I'd just like to repeat that going up and down, that would be the Y axis axis. The Y axis would be going up and down. And I did indicate that in those blue blocks. So I'm going to focus on this block over here and I'm going to just duplicate it. That means make two of them. I'm copying it and I'm going to bring in the highest numbers in the Y category and the X category on the Y is the Y axis and the X axis. So we're going to bring that in. I'm going to choose the numbers, the highest number in these blue blocks, the set of blue blocks, and the lowest number, and I'm going to place them in this pick random. So if you look over here, that's 115, and then we've got a minus 128. So I'm going to put this one as the 1, 115 minus 115 that'll be on the y and the highest number would be yep 132 so it means it's going to go on the y axis going up and down between those two numbers so the the computer will choose a random number which ranges between the minus 115 and 132 if you don't quite understand that just copy exactly what I'm doing now put that into your block and sooner or later you'll get to understand it when you learn about numbers and you'll you'll start realizing what it's all about can you see I've just put it into the Y section of the glide block that gliding in five seconds it's going to go to that random number within the glide block that the computer will choose so it's going to move the computer will choose a position on the up and down axis, the Y axis. Now we've got to do the same for the X axis. So let's look at the numbers that we've got over here. And those show everything that's on the X axis would be the first numbers shown. Go to X and you can see the numbers over there. We're just going to choose the highest. The lo Well, the lowest one is 198. And now we're going to choose the highest number on that. And that would be the biggest number we have. And that would be the one over here, which is the 198. So we have the computer now will choose on the X axis. Now we all know that the X axis is going across. And you can see, look, our cat after five seconds would redirect itself. And that's bringing in an aspect of automation. 
that's something really exciting in computers that they can start working and doing things by themselves. It also is quite scary because you often find people are frightened when they start seeing something that does it by itself without them controlling it. There are certain people that really want to control everything around them. And I think it's a wonderful thing to see that there's this autonomy, this autonomous aspect that comes in. Some of you, when you get to learn a little bit more about freedom, will also kind of link that up with what we're doing here. And so our computer seems to have a life of its own. And I've even brought in a change of costume, the next costume, which is different slides or pictures that would indicate and follow each other, giving the element of animation. Look at that. He's going as if he's moving fast because the forever loop is moving so fast going moving across the costumes so if you go like that we pick a random and we're going to change the y we just bring that little bit of code in and you can see it's moving extremely fast go to x it's just jumping from one position to another um, it's not really gliding or moving smoothly it's just a jumping about so i'm going to take that out when we place our go to random it just jumps all around so it's just a random position that means a position an x and a y axis position is just chosen randomly so it's just like jumping about chaotically so it doesn't really and if you take that away you can see we've got this element of movement again we're going back to that animation aspect and we all know that it's almost as if this sprite has a life of its own it's seemingly doing things by on itself now the number that we type in when i go with this move steps you look if i make it a negative number negative 10 and he's moving on the x-axis and he's moving backwards so if i had to change the number in there i'm going to change that number and make it 10 and you can see he's moving in the opposite direction so a positive number would move him in the right hand towards the right hand side and a negative number would make him move in the left hand side you can see almost that this control system that allows him to move around is quite fascinating i read a number of books about cybernetics which is how things are controlled and machines and humans and biological systems and that was interesting look at this pointing towards the mouse pointer every time i move my little pointer here he's trying to chase it i think this gives me the idea that we should make a chasing game so let's see if we can explore that but you can see he wants to get the mouse pointer it's something it's almost like an animal would want to get food when they're hungry there's this driving force that they want to get food and here my cat is wanting to get my mouse pointer there's some really good books written about how animals are controlled and how their systems follow control mechanisms i remember reading gregory bates and let's look at this go to x and y and you can see there's a position indicated He's like stuck in the corner here there is something in human beings and biological systems that allows us to control to operate as we do we are pretty much running on some sort of coding system i'm sure some of you have a lot of interesting ideas around that you've got to experiment you've got to really play around to understand things don't be someone who just just expects everything to work perfectly play around try to understand the logic of why things operate as they do and the more you play around the more you'll get to understand it but sometimes you've got to also look at experts when they provide their programs and you can look at that let's look at this point in the direction of that so we'll put the random in and I'm going to change this to minus 180 to 180 and you can see it should change my direction that my sprite is pointing I've got to click on my sprite to activate this because it's on the when click sprite event so we're going to move our cursor to the sprite click on him and you can see look he's swiveling around on some axis in the middle it's almost like he can't get out of there and he's just spinning around he moves like chaotically it's like a crazy cat here right so we can see that this movement is pretty erratic but nevertheless is all linked up here we're moving by two steps so we change that we we have this interesting feature 
Interestingly enough, in animals, in biological systems, you often find they move around erratically when they're not well, they're sick, there's convulsions, and they don't seem to follow the normal logic of a healthy system. So when you see your code, you're probably going to try and mimic something or simulate something that's found in the real world. It's got to feel real. Your game must feel real. So look at the animation there. It's pretty smooth. He's moving in that direction and there we go we brought the bounce event okay so we've brought that block over there just underneath that move 10 steps and he's bouncing off the sides every time he hits the sides he collides with the sides and he would bounce off it you can see there's a pattern there as well interesting I know that we're moving towards the winter period and you've got animals that are all starting to fly to warmer climates, the birds for instance, and some animals going to hibernation. So that's interesting that you've also got this movement towards a more suitable environment. And here our scratch cat's just been defined within that environment. He can't get out. He's just reflecting that sort of logic. There's nothing really biological about him, but there's something that we are trying to make him more lifelike. Okay, let's take that away. I'd like you to be very imaginative when you play around with your scratch games, trying to think very carefully and philosophically about what's going on here. Look at that, always bouncing up and down like that. And he's just bouncing off the sides. Incidentally, today's lesson is largely due to Josh. Yesterday we had a wonderful discussion. He was making a game, and a lot of what we, we've got here comes from the interaction with Josh. I thought of doing this because of him. So thanks, Josh. Now, when you bring in that sound effect, the meow, that would bring in sound. But you'll notice that when you do that, it slows down the code. So you'll see if I do bring it in, it's it, everything just slows down. So I've just thrown it away for the moment. Now, to make an interesting game, I'm going to bring in another sprite. I'm not quite content to just have this little scratch cat alone. So I'm going to clean up my area of code and I'm going to go look for another s scratch cat. Uh, not a scratch cat, but another sprite. So we're going to scroll on the right hand side and find what sprites are available. So I'm going to click on that and you can see there's a whole range of different sprites. I'm going to choose a ball because I'd like a, a ball to go and try to hit against my cat and that would indicate that I managed to get the cat. So we've got a ball here, a tennis ball. We'll just put the tennis ball over there and we all know that that would be easily found with that block that will show the X and Y position of that tennis ball over there. So let's scroll to the left hand side and we're going to go find where the position of that ball is. So first of all, let's bring in a click event. When flag click event, which is going to start the ball movement. And then we're going to bring in a forever loop, which means we'll start reading the blocks of code right at the top, go through the sequence of blocks. When we get to the bottom, we go back to the top. And when we get to the bottom, we go to the top again. And it's a continuous process of reading blocks and it never stops. I'm going to bring in a movement, so we're going to move, we'll just change that, it's by default 10, we're going to change it to 11, we're going to move 11 steps, and we know that our scratch cat was moving 10, so our ball would be moving one step faster than our scratch cat, so the ball's going to be moving slightly faster, so we're moving 11 steps, I'm just going to go to the sensing area, and let's see what we have there. I'd like to use the keyboard, so I'm going to make that when you press on the keyboard, keys up, down, left and right keys, we will be able to do things. So let's go to the down arrow key, and we know that we're going to make the down arrow key is going to moving in a negative direction. So we're going to look very carefully for the operators. Oh, sorry, we're going to look for the if statement and we're going to say if we press the down arrow key, then we're going to bring our movement in the downward movement. Some of you might know that that would be a negative, it would be in a negative number, it would take it in the opposite direction, a downward movement. So let's just look over here. A downward movement would be on the y axis, that's why I chose that block, and we're going to just change this to a negative and that would be moving downwards and negative 11. So 
whenever we press the downward arrow on our keyboard, our scratch cat's going, oh, sorry, our ball will be moving downward at the speed of minus 11. Okay, I'm just going to copy this, duplicate it. You see how I'm duplicating, double, doubling them up, and I'm going to change the two wires, just get everything neatened up. I'm going to change the wires to be appropriate. So we got the down arrow, and this one will be the up arrow. We're going to make that a positive number because that's moving upwards, and these ones will be thrown away because we know that the left and right would be on the x-axis. So we're going to change that down arrow to be the right and the left arrow. So this one would be the left, and that one will be the right. And that's going. the right would be a positive number, and the left arrow is going to be moving in a negative. So we'll have minus 11 and plus 11. Okay, so that's the x-axis I've just showed you. Now to find the appropriate block, so we're going to bring that in, and we're going to change the x by, and we obviously have to have it the same speed, so it'll be 11 again. And because we're moving in the left direction, we have a negative 11. And then on the next block, obviously you know what we're going to do. We're going to put in the positive 11. We'll just change that 10 into an 11. By doing this, we should have the ability to move our tennis ball and we're going to obviously try to develop that that tennis ball will find, I've just brought it into the favor loop, that tennis ball will try to knock against our scratch cat. So I'm going to now press the keys and you can see I am, you can see my tennis ball is moving. So if I move in the left direction, we know, and that's moving down and we're moving across. It can move horizontally or vertically. And we obviously wanted to knock against scratch cat. If it does, we know that there could be the game has been won and you have collided with the ball with scratch cat you've hit scratch cat with the ball now to return to the scratch cat code so i've just activated with a little blue mark at the bottom there i'm back in scratch cat and you can see we've got his next costume he's moving 10 and if in on the edge he's bouncing so we're going to play around with that little bit of code that activates the tennis ball code so you can see there's all our down arrows, left arrow, right arrow, and up arrow. We've got all of that moving 11, one more than our scratch cat in terms of steps. Let's experiment a little bit more with the speed. So I'm going to go on a scratch cat. Let's change this 10 into a 20, and then we'll just see what happens there. Change the move steps to 20, and let's see how fast that would be. Look how fast that is. And Scratch Cat's moving around really fast. be quite difficult to hit him when he's moving at that speed. Could make the game a little bit more challenging, but you've got to hit a Scratch Cat with a tennis ball that's moving very fast. There, change that. So let's see. You've got to play around and find what is most appropriate for your game. And see how our Scratch Cat is bouncing against the edges. That little block, the last block in our forever loop. There we go, we've got the balls code again. Interesting. And now let's make some other changes. Let's bring in some collision. So we're going to bring in the collision event where the, the if the, the ball is hitting the scratch cat. So we're going to need, if it's going to be an if then, if the ball hits the scratch cat, we know that that would be a, what would that be? That would be a condition if the ball if whenever you hear the if so we got in this part over here we've got if touching sprite one the sprite one's the name of my scratch cat if the ball's touching sprite one then we'll bring in the if then so we're going to bring that in there and that brings in if the ball is touching sprite one and we should know this from some of our purple mash work some of the learners who were doing isaac newton and the apple i forget the what it was called, you would have some familiarity, familiarity with the collision event. So we've got that if the ball touches the sprite. Now, when they touch each other, I'm just going to stop everything. So I'm going to take this little block, bring it in, and that'll stop the whole game. So the whole aim at the moment is when that ball collides with the sprite, then the game stops. And just now we'll bring in an announcement that the ball, the cat has been killed, and 
the game is is therefore terminated whatever we want to do so look i'm moving it with my keyboard and you can see i'm trying to get hold there we go and it stops all the game goes into a freeze the game is then stopped now being a bit lazy today i'm just going to bring in a little backdrop and that backdrop will be announcing that the game has been won you managed to hit the ball against scratch cats so i'm just going to look for anything i'm not really being particular we've got a desert scene here and that will be the backdrop and i'm just going to type something in over here so the t stands for typing some words and i'm going to put it in just to announce that you have won the game so we'll move it up just select everything and drag it I'm not even trying to make it bigger or anything. You can make it more fancy. But that's going to be the announcement that Scratch Cat has been hit with a tennis ball and you have won the game. So this backdrop is the announcement area. And in some moment from now or a while later, I'm going to show you how we'll do something that you lost. or We'll bring in that part of it that if you get away if scratch cat gets away then you lose the game but it's pretty simple so we'll bring in another just random backdrop i'm not going to really choose anything this will be the one that we play with and it's just being shown throughout the game until scratch cat is hit then the announcement backdrop that desert scene will come up now we have to bring in some sort of code that's going to bring that backdrop so we're going to go and find that so we're going to go to Let's have a look. There we go. And this little block over here looks appropriate. Switch backdrop to, and we know it was the desert scene because that would indicate that the touching the sprite, the ball's touching the sprite, and we know the desert scene is going to indicate, well, well done, you won. So the desert scene would be the backdrop to, and to show there. And now we need a normal backdrop that's just going to play all the time. So we're going to switch the backdrop of this one to backdrop that backdrop over there. And that means it'll be the normal backdrop that we play in the background. It's not really the most appropriate. We probably should have chosen something else, but I'm just showing you how this works. And you can see that that's the play backdrop, the normal play backdrop. You'll have to be a lot more careful and make sure that your backdrops are really appropriate and they suit the game. But I'm just giving you a tutorial so that you can understand a bit of this. And you can see if I go on Sprite being clicked, then automatically that's the starting position that our Sprite would, would start the game. He'd be in that position right in the beginning. And you can see he's bouncing about and it all seems to be working. I'm just going to simulate and see if I can move the ball with my key my keyboard and if i do hit against the scratch cat it should stop the game and then our backdrop that says you won there we go i knocked against him right at the end and it says you win the game so that was the desert backdrop indicating that the game had been won so it seems to be working i would prefer to bring my code into the click flag event so i'm going to just make some changes and bring my scratch cat into the click flag events. I'm going to disconnect that bit of code, this forever loop, and I'm going to link it up to the click flag event. I don't think we want this click sprite event. It doesn't seem to work that well. We'll have that when both of them, the flag and the ball, are clicking the flag, both of them start moving and they're active. The ball is then ready to be moved with the up, down, left and right arrow keys of your keyboard. Okay, so that's a lot better. We've improved on our code somewhat in this respect that both of them are simultaneously being triggered started off with the click flag event as you move through your coding you'll see you'll develop you'll see how oh, that's not a great idea there's certain things that i can improve and you'll see the evolution or the ability to be able to make a marvelous program develops as you go through it but you've got to constantly be thinking about how you can improve this and that aspect of your coding I would say that the best coders are quite philosophical people. They like to understand how things work and the technical aspects of systems and how things move around and work like this. They're fascinated by that. They're systems thinkers. And I'd like you to all develop that sort of thinking because it really is quite a useful bit of ability. 
it's really important to get to understand all these blocks of code and see what they can do for you. So if you look at the green ones here, these are the operators and they are useful in, in, in so many things. And here you've got the events. Those are the triggers that set things off. Got motion over here, which moves things. Get to know how you can use these and you'll find you can become more creative because you've got to know how each of these blocks can be used in your creative coding or structuring of your systems. I'm just going to try this position over here. And if I click on the flag, you can see my scratch cat's already starting to move in a very crazy manner. There's a little bit more smooth. Interesting how he's moving like that. He's following my mouse pointer at this moment. I've just brought in the mouse pointer and he's once again chasing that. But that's an interesting feature, but not what I really want. So we're going to take this out. We're going to bring that out, just drag it away. And I'm going to bring this bit of code back in. We really don't want our, our mouse pointer being chased by the scratch cat. Let's just bring in another adaptation. I'm going to use the mouse pointer to move my ball. So we're going to make that face the mouse pointer and see if we can hit our scratch cat. What could be a new adaptation, something a little bit more exciting than having to move on the keyboards. So we're going to see if that really works. I'm going to test it out and see if it works. So I've got the mouse pointer and I'm going to just change the movement steps to be, let's go with this, 15 steps. And that means it'll move a bit faster. There we go. And I'm moving my mouse pointer to try hit the scratch cat. You can see it's a little bit easier moving the mouse and the whole aim to hit against the scratch cat. I don't seem to be doing that. And I'm wondering why it's not working. So let's have a look at our code. Yes, I have to bring in this if touching on the sprite that will stop the game. So once that block of code is brought in those three blocks then you find it will make everything work so if you look at the side here let's try again there we go you win the game the desert backdrop comes up my mouse points is just moving around and i'm trying to hit that scratch cat as soon as i hit the scratch cat it would indicate you win the game the desert backdrop would announce that again I think we can leave it at this point. It's been an exciting lesson. I'd just like to thank you all for watching. Just going to move some of this out of the way. But it's been tremendous and I've really appreciated the fact that you've gone to the trouble of watching this video. And I hope that you've learned something through the whole experience. And I look forward to hearing from you. And I wish you the best. Please do urge your parents and other people to subscribe. I'd like to grow this YouTube channel as far as I can and we look forward to further lessons in the future. Thank you very much and a big welcome to all the new learners. I see there's quite a lot of you and especially to our grade naught learner.